right here. You still got the ghetto uh, sign right here, but straight out of PS Podcast. We are live. Well, not live, but uh, this is a lot. This is the new live video kind of. Uh, I'm Jordan, and go ahead and introduce yourself and where you went. Hi, I'm Crystal. Um, I'm 37. I went to Cost by the Sea in April of 1999 until September of 2001. Okay, and uh, let's see. Um, and go ahead and explain your, your first day there. What, what was that like? And did, did you get transported? So what happened was uh, my mom told me that uh, I had a court order to go to a program in Mexico for two weeks. So she explained to me there were going to be escorts picking me up at the San Diego airport and they would transport me there. There'd be vacations and trips to the beach, all this stuff. So I got off the airplane and there were two, sure enough, two escorts that came to take me, take me there. I arrived to Casa by the Sea, and first thing I see are these big red doors and barred windows everywhere. They escort me into the office for like take in. They brought me to a room and they made me strip naked and they did a strip search. Was was there? Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I just want to ask: um, Were there females and males there, or did they have it yeah. like? Oh, so, um, they had at, when I first um, arrived. Like during the strip search thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so there was the boys, they lived on the upper two floors and the girls were on the bottom floor. And then eventually they separated us to another facility just outside the building. Okay. So where was I? So when I got there, they did strip search. They um, took all my belongings, including my photographs um, and gave me a uniform and they said, get in line. And we had to walk in file lines. Um, We were uh, assigned, so each classroom, it was called a family. And so, um, yeah. and each staff member, you know, were called the mamas and, mm-hmm. uh, they, um, decided the buddy and went over the rules with me. Um, we had to get permission to sit, stand, go to the bathroom. I think just like yours, you're at Cross Creek, right? Uh, Spring Creek. Spring Creek. I always get the two mixed up. Uh, that one, Montana? Uh, yeah, Thompson Falls. Yeah. Um, we were forced to speak only in Spanish. None of the staff spoke any English. Hmm. Um, okay. For the time we shared a building with the boys, whenever they were to walk by, we were told in Spanish to drop to the floor and cover our eyes. Wow. Um, if we were to look at the boys, it was a cat two violation. Okay. Where we would eat for anywhere from four to nine hours listening to 45 minute long audio tapes. Where we sit in the <laughs> And um, straight, you know, at the edge of the chair, couldn't turn our heads. Um, we weren't allowed to go to the bathroom without permission. Um, there'd be times where we were forced to hold it for a long time. Um, what's the longest, you, like, personally, like, what's the longest you heard about or, like, what's the longest they made you wait? Um, and what, and worksheets? No, 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 for, like, going to the bathroom, like, the whole... Oh, just, gosh. You know. Well, we weren't allowed to go for an hour after eating. Oh, and a wow. lot of them had intestinal problems because they had bad water and the food was kind of sketch. Yeah. So it would be anywhere from an hour, you know, to hour and a half. Oh, wow. Um, we had to do seminars, you know, like, we couldn't go to the bathroom whenever we wanted. We had to wait until the facilitator gave us permission. Mm-hmm. Um... And were those seminars the same? Was it was it orientation, discovery, focus, principles, yes. all of those? Okay, so they were the premier seminars. Oh okay. gosh, the seminar majority. Actually, no, yeah, every student, including the facilitator Jan, got s- severely ill. They got sick from the ham sandwiches. Really? And, I, I know Jan. Yeah. I know Jan. Oh yeah, she was a treat, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> um. But it was pretty intense, you know, like we had no communication with the outside world, you know, being in a foreign country, not speaking your own language, you know. Did you you know Spanish before you went there? No. I I mean. How was that? How was getting getting used to that? How long did it take you to like get into the swing of like understanding, you know, maybe. We basically only had like five sentences that we could say, really. So those were kind of easy to learn, you know, like. Can I sit? Can I stand? Can I go to the bathroom? Can I talk? Yeah. To That's the only things we're allowed to say, even. Yeah. So, um, I ha- you know, we kind of, it took me probably not long at all because I kept getting in trouble for not saying, you know, asking permission for stuff. So about a week, 
Okay. But okay. then over, you know, two and a half years, then I, I learned a lot more Spanish. Okay. Uh, so you were there two and a half years, you said? Yes. Okay. Um, did you graduate? No, I got pulled at level five. 9-11 um, happened, and then two weeks later, I got pulled. Okay. okay. I was the only kid that did not go through PC1 with the parents, you know, the seminars with the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't even know if I would have been able to graduate just because I didn't meet all the requirements, but, well, you know. By the book, technically, probably not. But yeah. Yeah. Um, like the, the seminars and stuff just being voted up, you know, it was really hard to. How long did it take you to, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, uh, how long did it take you to get um, to get up to level five? Oh, wow. Probably almost two and a half years. I was only level five for a couple months. Um, I was it took me 14 months to get level four. And then I ended up getting 10 consequences. Um, I brought soda instead of a water bottle to take my meds and the day my mom and grandma were visiting me after not seeing them for almost a year and a half. And then the day that they left, I got dropped back down to level two and I had to start all over again. That took me another year to get voted back up almost because like once you drop levels, you know, it's like everyone else sees you as, Oh, she dropped levels. She's, you know, she's nothing. We're not going to vote for her to go back up. It was yeah. just very clicky and just, it sucked <laughs> having your progress based around a bunch of emotionally unstable teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. And whether they like you or not, you know, if they, if they just don't flat out don't like you, you know, you're going to have hell. You know, that's why I didn't get level six. I mean, because because at Spring Creek, you know, level six, you can't have anybody stand for you. If there's one person stands for you, you're toast. You can't get level six because it's supposed to be like, a you know, level six is the last level. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. So you should, you know, and I understand you you should have 100 percent support if you're getting level six. I, I feel, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. level six, you know, it's the last level, but the last part. Yeah. Well, but it's um, hard, man. It's hard. Cause there's, there's just those couple people that just didn't like me for whatever reason, you know, and they just stand every time. It didn't matter what I did. With just, their phone feedback. Oh, I don't support you. Cause you don't open up enough. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. yeah. So or they'll make yeah. something up on the spot. Yeah. It's rough. Mm -hmm. I can't describe the stuff that we all went through with the emotional trauma, but you know, just like it was like a mind game. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I have to remember to do this and this, or I'm gonna get in trouble. Like, I felt like I was constantly. All I was told while I was there was that I was bad. I it deserved to be there. I was there for a reason. And basically, I walked out of there. Yeah, I didn't, you know, go do drugs and like run away again. But I felt like it kind of left me more damaged in other ways than it did good. You know, I had nightmares for 10 years. Um, I still have abandonment issues, CPTSD, you know, like all you guys. Mm -hmm. it do, you, do you feel like you got some perfection issues, maybe OCD from it? I'm just asking because I got that big time from the program. I definitely. Well, I'm a house cleaner and uh, remember how they used to do our inspections when you clean the bathroom yeah. on here. Especially on Sunday, especially on Sundays, deep clean, man. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I, I I definitely you know have that high standards for cleaning. I go. I was in Mexico. I got trained. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't trip. I know how to clean. Don't trip. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so what was? You said there was families there. How many families were there? And do you remember the names of them? Yeah. So oof, I don't remember how many off the top of my head. Now they actually added more when I got pulled. There was Esteem, Odyssey, <clears throat> Merit, Courage, Integrity. Um, I forgot what the upper, oh, Essence. Essence was the upper levels when I was in. Um, Odyssey, I think that's as many as I remember. And then for the boys, there was Justice, Loyal, um, Noble. Like, stuff, like, yeah. Those are all their names. Was there a lot of, how many people would you say when you got there, how many people do you think was on the facility if you had to make an estimate? Um, I was an early Casa goer, so I want to say probably about 300 kids total. Okay. And that's, and including, that's including, staff like six or just, kids by the time I left. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, it, it doubled by the time I left. They had to keep adding families and yeah. Okay, and are you um, to, making that estimate on, was that including staff or just the students? No, no, I was just with the students, yeah. Oh, okay, um, I'm just curious, trying to get a better understanding. 
Um, I think it's really interesting to find out like how these how each place differs. Mm-hmm. Oh, from absolutely. The next. Um, let's see. Um, did they have intervention there? Did they have study hall? Well, that's kind of what worksheets was, and then they turned it from worksheets where we listened to those audible books to um, a study hall. Okay. Um, so you you know do your homework there. Everything was like a independent study. Like the teacher that came, she not, I don't think she was even accredited. She barely spoke English. She just came and checked our work and gave us the books we needed. Would you uh, study like say study a chapter, read a chapter, study a chapter, and then take a test on the chapter? And yep. then Yep. Okay, that's how we did it. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, when I came back to the States, like, I was all out of line, like, like, okay, so you're caught up on all your English for this grade, but you're behind from this grade and this grade, it was all a mess. And the way they do the credit system in Mexico versus the States is completely different. <laughs> so I almost didn't graduate on time when I came back. Okay, so do you, so was that not graduating on time? Was that because some um, a lot or some of the credits weren't transferable or... What, what was the I reason? I think because, like, um, they basically l- let us pick based on our grade subjects we wanted to work on. So I did, like, all, all the things I wanted to do, and I, like, um, you know, just kind of didn't do the math and stuff. I don't think they really, like, monitored it very well. Yeah, they didn't have, like, an outline of here was what you should know by the end of yeah. high school or something. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, here's a history book and this and this for 